Welcome Ridge Life, I'm Tim, and today we have got a turbo boost problem in our 6.7 liter Power Stroke Super Duty F250 King Ranch version Ford pickup truck. And I bet a lot of you have this same problem and don't even know it, robbing you of precious fuel and precious power. Let's fix it today. So what happened was I was doing uh, regular maintenance on our uh, Super Duty. I was uh, changing the oil, the air filter, uh, the fuel filters. You know, there's one behind the cab. And of course, there's the fuel filter right here with these pesky quick connects. I got a video if you broke one of those off, go check that out. Um, but I was changing the fuel filter and I noticed this radiator line, this radiator line, the uh, aluminum foil, the... Uh, the uh, heat reflective tape is all burned and falling off. And I was like, what is going on here? And then I touched these hoses and they're all melty. They're all melty. So we, we've had super, super high heat in this area. And what that is, is right here, this intercooler bottom cold charge hose is cracked, busted wide open, and it is blowing heat out onto our radiator hose and of course these cross neck hoses here. What that does for you, or against you I should say, is starves you about 20% of your turbo boost. You're blowing that cold, that air out, that hose, very, very hot air, even though it's called the cold charge line, it's very, very hot air. Uh, it, it blows 20% at least of that air out there and it will starve you of your boost. You may feel surging, surging on your engine when you're driving or you're towing especially. You'll definitely feel it when you're towing uh, if you've got a busted line. I bet 80% of you can go out there right now with 60,000 miles or more on your vehicle and you'll find cracks in this hose. Now we've got 170,000 on this 2017. I know uh, we put a lot of miles on it. Um, and that's, I'm surprised I didn't notice it. It was not like this last time I changed the fuel filter and that's how quick this can happen. But we've got several big wide cracks and I bet you've got some coming as well. So today we're gonna replace this hose with a genuine motorcraft hose and talk about some different things. But let's go ahead and start getting this hose replaced. If you came to this video because you got a P00BD error code that says mass or volume airflow A circuit range performance airflow too high, you have came to the right place. It is not your mass airflow sensor. It has nothing to do with that. It is this cold charge intercooler hose. This is the right place to go. This, this will fix. You, change, you, you got that error code, go check that hose, and you have a split in it, crack in it, you replace it, you will take care of this error code. We're going to be using a genuine Motorcraft part to replace our bottom uh, intercooler charge hose. Now, uh, this part number is HC3Z-6F03-B. Now, originally this was a dash A. Supposedly they've improved this a little bit with a dash B. I really don't know what changed. It seems awful uh, light to me. Um, but this, again, is a genuine Motorcraft part. Uh, you can get an aluminum aluminum hose. It'll have a, a flexible elbow, it'll be aluminum right here where that blows out, and uh, that will last you the life of this engine, the life of this vehicle. It'll be about $300 or so to get you an aluminum one. Now, it most likely won't come with this quick connect or the sensor there. It'll connect right onto this adapter. Uh, you can get an aftermarket one of these as, as well, about 80 bucks probably. And again, it won't come with the adapter or the sensor. This was $110 from Ford. Um, again, you know the, the part number I'll leave in the description. Uh, so you can also cross-reference that with an aftermarket hose or the aluminum as well. So let's get to installing our replacement hose. The tools to change our hose out today are very, very simple. You just need a, a flathead screwdriver, standard screwdriver, and a seven millimeter socket uh, with a couple extensions on there. I say about 10 or 12 inches of extensions will really help you get to that bottom hose clamp. So these are all the tools you're gonna need. On the throttle body side of the hose, We've got a hose clamp here, but we are not taking off that hose clamp because our hose came with this adapter. Now we will have to take off this uh, sensor right here. I'll show you how to take that off here in just a second. You also have this little clip you have to pull up. You gotta be careful not to break that. And then the adapter has a quick uh, spring release that's really, really handy and makes it really easy to go back on. I'll show you that in just a second as well. The bottom side of the hose, you can see right here that connects to the intercooler, just has a hose clamp on it. Uh, so we will loosen that up. And again, that's a seven millimeter uh, socket to get on that hose clamp, or you can use a standard screwdriver to loosen it up as well. I prefer a socket. Uh, it's a lot more secure. Uh, I recommend taping your uh, extensions on your uh, uh, ratchet wrench together so you don't drop them down inside the engine compartment here. Uh, that keeps them together, keeps them from uh, giving you a bad day. 
I forgot to show you on the new hose, but this is the old hose we pulled off. And you can see how the clip works here. See these little, it pushes in. So when I slide it on, it just pushes them open. But to take it off, all you gotta do is pull the ring off all the way and uh, then you'll be able to pull the hose off very easily. Our sensor is very, very dirty, and look at the, see the oil inside here. Your turbo will have a little bit of oil blow by. And this red O-ring in here on the new hose, Ford pre-lubricated it. It had some blue lubricant on there, and uh, which makes it slide on and seal very, very well. To move our sensor plug, all you do is push on the end of the connector there, and that will slide right off. And then I like to uh, use a pair of uh, uh, wire strippers you can get that right up under this connector here, and that should be able to pry it right up without breaking. There you go. See how it pried right up? Did not break it. Pull these hoses out of the way. Our retaining ring, we're just going to lift that right off there, get that off both sides, and that will allow us to uh, easily pull off. There we go. Pull off our hose. It should just come right off. To get the bottom side of the hose off, I'm just going to get my extension down in here. Luckily, Ford put the... Uh, Screw right at the top, should make it fairly easy for me. And then it's gonna do a few turns loose. Once I get it loose enough, I should be able to just pull the bottom side right off. Again, this is just a standard hose clamp. Now I should be able to just pull bottom hose right off the inner cooler there. Make sure it comes off. Oh yeah, boom, it is off. Get that out of there and let's take a look and see how bad this thing is cracked. Look at that. That is cracked wide open there and uh, blowing out. Some people have a huge split all the way down it. Mine has these two cracks right there. We've got our new hose ready. I'll go ahead and feed that down there. I'm not going to put the bottom on until I put the top on. That way I make sure it is lined up properly, okay? So I'm just going to get it straight up like this right where it needs to be and i believe that looks like it's lined up where it was and you see I, when i pushed it on it clicked in place that retaining spring just held it right in place so now all i gotta do is put that retainer on there put this connector right back on there and we are connected here now i just gotta attach the bottom now all i gotta do is slide hose over the barb at the bottom of the intercooler it should just pop right on now that I've got the hose back on, I can get my wrench down in the bottom there and uh, let's tighten, tighten the nut, get that hose clamp tightened on and we will be done with this job. I'm gonna use this silver insulating tape to wrap around our radiator hose that had the uh, insulation damage. This uh, give it a nice uh, protective layer to keep the insulation uh, and reflect away all that heat. All right, we got the uh, hose all nice and pretty with the new silver tape on it. Uh, all of our other hoses are uh, attached back. Again, our sensor is connected. Uh, everything should be good. We are connected at the bottom of the intercooler as well. Let's go ahead and power it up and see if we have any uh, perfect boost. We've got our turbo boost gauge. Now, when I start the engine, I don't expect to have too much boost, even accelerating, but I do want to see some boost. If I don't see any, I know I'm, I'm losing a lot of air on that intercooler. So let's go ahead and start it. All right, I don't see, let's get the gauge out of the way. All right, here's our boost. All right, we've got boost. All right, now let's go see if we have any air coming out. Everything looks good in the engine compartment. I don't see anything around the hose. I think we got all, all connections done. This job was very, very simple, about a 10 minute job. And I guarantee the dealership would charge you 300 bucks, at least 300 bucks. We did it for 110. All right, we got the engine up to temp. Let's see how much boost we can get now. Oh yeah, like it. Hope you enjoyed today's video and hopefully this video was helpful to you if you've got one of these Ford F-250 pickup trucks. That uh, power boost problem is uh, common across all of these 6.7 liter engines. Uh, that hose is just not made for the manufacturer to withstand that uh, heat and that pressure of that turbo on that uh, intercooler return and that charge line. Um, 
Of course, you know, you can go with the aluminum, like we mentioned before, aluminum is, you know, about $300 or so last year for the life of the vehicle, that's for sure. Uh, you can go with an aftermarket, save you about $20 or $30 and probably have the same issue. So whichever way you want to go, again, this is a super easy fix. Guys, if you haven't subscribed to Ridge Life, I sure appreciate it if you take the time to do so now. We do all kinds of things here on our channel. Uh, not only do uh, how-tos and product reviews, uh, we do country living. I've got chickens and uh, rabbits and honeybees and we uh, get out on the tractor and we uh, do all kinds of fun things here on our almost 40 acres. Um, smash that thumbs up if you like today's video. I, I, that really mean a lot to me and hit the notification bell to be notified anytime a new video comes out on our channel. Guys, until next time, I hope everyone has a blessed, blessed day and go Ridge Life.